Welcome to my PowerPoint about underpowered cards. Let's start with caravans. Caravans are cards from Fe uh, Forged in the Barrens, and there are five of them. Warlock and Apothecary Caravan. Two mana, one, three. At the start of your turn, summon a one cost minion from your deck. Soldier's Caravan, a Paladin, two mana, one, three. At the start of your turn, summon two, one, one silver hand recruits. Prospector's Caravan, a Hunter minion, two mana, one, three. At the start of your turn, give all minions their hand plus one plus one. Soothsayer Caravan, a Priest minion, two mana, one, three. At the start of your turn, copy a spell from your opponent's deck to your hand. And Tiny Thins Caravan, a 2 mana 1 3 Shaman minion. At the start of your turn, draw a Murloc. The caravans are bad cards, to say the least. Uh, they all are 2 mana 1 3s with start of turn effects to varying degrees. The issue is, is that most of them actually had pretty good effects. Apothecary's Caravan was actually a very strong effect. Summoning, summoning, or not was, but is summoning a random one or a one drop from your deck can be very strong. You summon your flame imps, you summon your void walkers, cards like that. That's not bad. A uh, soldier's caravan giving you two silver hand recruits. If that was end of turn, it would be insane. Prospector's caravan, same thing. If okay, well, let's be real for a moment. If prospector's caravan was end of turn, it would be an unbalanced card. It would be so broken. It'd be the best of these by far. It would not be fair in the slightest because, well, that's a four mana effect. It's on a, it's on like Grime Street Enforcer, I think it's called. Four mana, four, four. At the end of your turn, give all minions your hand plus one, plus one. That's a four mana effect, even if it's like on an old card. So yeah, Prospector's Caravan would have been broken if it was end of turn. Let's be real here. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that just says how big of a difference end of turn and start of turn is. Start of turn is so much weaker. Uh, Peasant is a great example as well. One mana, two, one. Start At the start of your turn, draw a card. It's... It's a lot worse than if it were end of turn, because we have Gold Panner, which is a 2-mana 1-2 end of turn draw card. Amazing card. Sees so much playing, so many different decks, and it's even one more mana over uh, Peasant just because it's end of turn instead of start of turn. Then, the uh, sorry, Soothsayer Caravan, if that was end of turn, it would probably actually be, like, significant as, like, a, a nice fuel card for these, like, uh, Value Pile, Reno Warlock. Not Warlock, sorry, Reno Priest kind of decks. It's just a 2-mana 1-3. You can f bump on board, and, you know, typically it will give you a pretty good spell. Uh, it's almost like, you know, if your opponent's playing a real deck, their spells are going to be really good. Aggro decks run decent removal spells, like Mind Seer is a decent removal spell. Uh, they run great draw spells, like Gear Shift or even Secret Passage. If you still get it, it's still pretty good. Uh, I guess maybe not that great, but... Uh, there's so many very powerful spells that are in aggro decks that can help you in a lot of matchups. Mana Burn is unbelievably good to get uh, as a copy against Demon Hunter. So if Soothsayer Caravan you know, was start of turn, it probably would be pretty good. At the time, you know, in standard, would it have been good? That's probably it. Probably would have because you have a uh, thing. You had things like Deck of Lunacy Mage that was really good early. Uh, Forge in the Barrens, where random spells from that were really powerful. There's just... Getting getting a, a consistent random spell every single time is pretty good. Especially from your opponent's deck. Just a 2 mana 1-3, end your turn, get a copy of a spell from your opponent's deck. Wow, that's pretty good. It just it just is. And then Tiny Fence Caravan. This one is probably still not that great. It's uh, would have been 2 mana 1-3, get... Or, like, draw a Murloc at the end of your turn. And that's... Maybe it would have been playable, Right. Uh, the, the Murloc package from Forge and the Barons for uh, Shaman wasn't that great. Like, yeah, it gave Fire Mental Flurgle, and Fire Mental Flurgle was really good and wild, but that 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 that's about it. Uh, it, it. There just wasn't really anything great about, like, the, the Murloc package from this. Like, it saw some play in, like, the early time, but as time went on, people realized, yeah, it kind of sucks. Like, so would have, like, Tiny Fence Caravan been, like, a decent card? Maybe if it were a Murloc itself, it would have been pretty good. But it wasn't a Murloc, so it didn't benefit from any of the buffs. Playing it on two when you had, like, a Tide Caller on one doesn't feel very good because you're not buffing it because it's not a Murloc. I think that Caravan's, like, probably... I think that four of them would have been fine and good if they were end of turn and, you know, Prospect's Caravan would have been broken, but... Being start of turn just held these cards back so much, they just can't really function. And that is quite sad, because I'm telling you, dude, like, 
all like genuinely speaking soldier's caravan would be so powerful if it were end of turn even in wild right now like it would be a great target from call to arms because it gives you so many bodies it's just it's just really strong apothecary's caravan probably like ebbs and flows on like kind of how good it would be yeah you could technically summon your malchazar's imp guaranteed from your deck and that might be good enough it might uh it probably isn't though let's be honest but in standard i mean we had like darkmoon ferizu warlock that probably would have loved this because it did run flame imp uh it did i'm trying to think what other one drops it had i know it had flame imp i know it had void walker uh it I, I mean just in general i guess like yeah I, I think it was only those two one drops actually now that i think about it but it, it still those are good options to pull and obviously you know if we actually had this card you would have tried other one drops like we have that hunter weapon now that trusty fishing rod that's a three mana one two weapon uh, after hero attack summon a one drop in your deck like that card is like kind of okay so apothecary's caravan as a two drop yeah that card probably would be pretty good then we have soloist so i've talked about soloist before and how they just don't really work um the whole idea of soloist is that you're supposed to have like a more powerful effect on your minion it because there's nothing on board the issue is, is that none of these not a single one of these cards is like good enough in that case like you have cowbell soloist a three mana four two battle cry if you control no other minions deal two damage that's not good there's there's like three mana three twos that do that already without a condition so why would it not at least be like three damage at least right drum soloist five mana five five dragon taunt this is for warlock or for warrior battle cry if you control no other minions gain plus two plus two and rush five mana seven seven taunt rush i mean that's probably okay if it like had no other text but because as condition really not that good saxophone soloist uh this is for shaman one mana one two murloc battle cry if you control another minions add a saxophone soloist to your hand so it's an understat it's just like firefly but like worse because well you have to again meet the condition and firefly hasn't been good in years harmonica soloist this one is for hunter three mana four two battle cry if you control no other minions discover and cast a secret this one is again not that great if it was cast two secrets yeah it actually probably would have seen play genuinely that would be quite good but only one secret is not that great opera soloist this one is for uh warlock five mana four six demon battle cry if you control another uh, minions deal three damage to all enemy minions this one did see some experimentation because well i mean if you were trying to make like a control warlock work you know, you don't run that many minions this would have been like nice but it just didn't work for again how do you ever not have minions if you don't have minions you're probably losing and these cards don't really make up for that keyboard soloist mage minion four mana two four naga battle cry if you control no other minions summon two one two amps with spell damage plus one this is this card is so awkward because like not only is it hard to use it doesn't do anything that good yeah it gives you some like decent bodies i guess you get a couple of stats out of it and spell damage but if you really care about spell damage you would just play like go with the flow which is a new card or in wild you would play uh street trickster which is three mana for plus two spell damage like keyboard solace just doesn't do anything and again decks that don't want to run minions don't want to run minions especially bad minions so keyboard solace just doesn't really work then lastly we have guitar soloist which is again from uh or sorry which is from demon hunter five mana four three battle cry if you control no other minions draw a spell minion and a weapon this one is again in an unfortunate scenario where like technically this could have been okay with like the uh the scythe uh in demon hunter the legendary that's like uh start of game just like turn three minions into your deck into one mana discover spells to discover a minion so like in theory it could have been okay with that but why would you run it it's super expensive it's understated and like yeah it's technically draw three but you can't draw a minion with it because you can't run minions in your deck so it just like that was like the one possible use case for this card but then it just doesn't even work correctly because well drawing a weapon is bad because you're gonna draw the scythe which is just a four man four two weapon and you can't draw a minion 
So the only deck that runs no minions to make use of the soloist effect doesn't work. Soloist is just like a, a half-baked mechanic that doesn't really function. Uh, I get what they were going for, right? I get it can kind of be cool, but the cards just aren't strong enough. And yeah, they're really underpowered. Then we have spirits. Okay. Although two of the original spirits were good, Spirit of the Shark and Spirit of the Frog, the other ones are pretty bad. Uh, Spirit of the Tiger, Paladin, 4 mana, 0, 3, uh, stealth for one turn. After you cast a spell, summon a Tiger of stats equal to the cost. Didn't. Just didn't do anything, ever. It's just, it's just so useless. Like, it's so expensive. And maybe if it wasn't stealth for one turn. Maybe if it wasn't, it could do something. But it's all, it is only stealth for one turn. It's just really weak. Really, really, really weak. Spirit of the Dragon Talk. Two mana, zero, three. Stealth for one turn. Your hero power also targets adjacent minions. So, yes, technically, you would play this in Hero Power Mage. But to say Hero Power Mage was good with this card in it is a lie. Is that this card's fault? Maybe, maybe not. But it still did fall in a very weak package that, I mean, falls in the guidelines of this video. It's really, really weak. And then, like, potentially it could have had a chance with, like, Wildfire. Wildfire stayed at two mana in Wild, but it didn't. So, yeah. Uh, then you have Spirit of the Lynx. Three mana, zero, three. Stealth for one turn. That's for Hunter. Whenever you summon a beast, give it plus one, plus one. If this was two mana, it would be an actually good card because we have something like Adult Grizzly, which is a two mana three T with two mana three two or two mana two three beast in Druid with the same text. I would never summon a minion, give plus one plus one. And that card is like not that great in Druid. But this is Hunter we're talking about. So a card like Spirit of the Links, especially because you can set this up preemptively. Uh, Adult Grizzly, you can't really set up that well. So the Spirit, if you could set it up, that would be really, really strong. I, I really do think so because like the way that it's worded as well, it's whenever you summon. So cards like Wolpertinger or Alley Cat or whatever uh, get benefited from it rather than just like whenever you play something. Uh, Spirit of the Raptor, one mana, zero, three, stealth for one turn. After your hero attacks and kills minion, draw a card. So attacking and killing a minion is bad. Why would you do that ever? Uh, if you have a lot of attack, it's just better to send it face objectively if you have enough attack to kill a minion it's just almost always better to send it face because well that's pressuring your opponent and dealing more damage spirit of the raptor could have been like kind of cool if like there were ways to kill more minions at once with it like if punch card was in druid punch cards the uh, warrior spell from the new mini set three mana gain three attack and give your hero cleave so if you could combine that with Spirit of the Raptor, well, that would be pretty good. But, of course, I mean, you can't. So Spirit of the Raptor just doesn't really do anything. Spirit of the Rhino is no better. This one's for Warrior. One mana, zero, three, stealth for one turn. Your rush minions are immune the turn they're summoned. It's just, like, not that big of an upside. And a lot of the time, Warrior minions like taking damage. So what, what benefit is there from, like, this card? If it were just your rush minions were immune, it would be probably really broken, actually. Or, like, at least immune on your turn. Probably be really broken. But it just doesn't really do anything is kind of the thing. It's like, a like yeah, okay, I'm going to rush my minions in, but I had to pay this one man attacks, and I had to have this card. And it's just, like, not great for what you get out of it. It just really isn't. Spirit of the Bat is from Warlock. Two mana, zero, three stealth for one turn. After a friendly minion dies, give a minion in your hand plus one plus one. So, this was supposed to go with, like, Hyreek the Bat, and, I mean, if you know anything, you know Hyreek the Bat is an 8-mana 1-1 one, one with Battlecry, so fill your board with copies of this, so it's supposed to get buffed from Spirit of the Bat, it just didn't work. Uh, I think that Spirit of the Bat, if this were, like, a Death Knight card, or maybe a Hunter card, or a Death Knight card for sure, it would be really strong. Uh, but Warlock doesn't have consistent ways to... Um, like, summon guys that die at the end of the turn or, like, get to kill things and they don't get to go really wide with a lot of tokens like war like Death Knight does. So this card just doesn't really work. It would be... It genuinely would be really good in Death Knight, though. Like, your hero power gives it stats, your mining casualties will give it stats, anything you play will give it stats, your... your, uh... What's it called? Prop rotation, the three mana, summon four one ones that die at the end of your turn with Rush... That card gives us a lot of stats. It would just be really strong. 
And then lastly, we have Spirit of the Dead. One mana, zero, three. Stealth for one turn. After a friendly minion dies, shuffle a one cost copy into your deck. This is for Priest. So the idea behind this card is that you're supposed to play one Swandi of the Dead with it, which is a seven mana, seven, seven, battle cry. Uh, draw at one, like, draw ev draw one cost minions till your hand is full or something. It's just draw a bunch of one cost minions. So you're supposed to shuffle a lot of stuff back in your deck, Spirit of the Dead, one Swamdi, and then you draw them all, and then you play them all because it costs one. And it just doesn't work. Like, uh, the thing about these cards is that, like, they're very much prototypes for locations. And, you know, I mean, locations take a lot from these cards, right? Where they have instant effects the turn you play them. They can't really be targeted, but then locations can last for, like, six whole turns on average or something like that. These only are going to last for, like, two turns on average. And they're still not even that good when they do last. Locations are significantly stronger and they're harder to remove. These cards are just, like, shocking. Like, I get that it's because of Roscon's Rumble. It's supposed to be weak because they wanted to, like, have a lower power like expansion. Yada, yada. Everyone knows all that, right? But the cards just don't really work is the thing. They don't work very well. They don't make sense. And it's sad, to say it at least, that it's, like, you have a whole, like, set of cards that, like, of nine cards, only two of them actually, like, made sense for the class. Which is not great, not great uh, outcome. It really isn't. And then lastly, we have odd and even support. We have Glitter Moth, which was for odd priest. Yep. Five mana, four, four beast. Battle cry, if your deck has only odd cost cards, double the health of your other minions. Yeah, there's a reason that odd priest is not very good. Um... For such an unbelievably expensive effect, all it does is double your minion's health. Which, you know, when you have to build a terrible deck because you have to build Odd Priest, and then you can't even run, like, Inner Fire to make use of it, what does doubling your minion's health do for you? Then we have Black Cat. 3 mana, 3, 3 beasts. Spell damage plus 1. If your deck only has odd cost cards, draw a card. This is from a Mage. This one was... I mean, this is an individually good card. It's spell damage plus one on a 3-3 and draws you a card. This card probably would actually be genuinely a good card in Hunter. But it's not in Hunter. It's in Mage. And Odd Mage kind of blows. Like, yeah, Odd Mage technically has access to Wildfire, but why would you ever do that when you could just play regular Hero Power Mage and, like, kill your opponent in one turn? Like, Black Cat, technically Odd... Like, technically Odd mage was quote unquote playable because people liked to play it at the time but again to call it a good deck is lying and i like what what, what like what do i gain from that uh <laughs> it does it doesn't make any sense it's just so bad it's so truly bad bloom stag five mana two four or two six beasts taunt battle cry if your deck has only odd cost cards gate blue plus two plus two this is for uh druid ironically Ironically, Odd Druid was a good deck at one point. Odd Questline Druid was really good into on-release Questline Hunter, and it was a, one of the only decks in the entire game that beat Questline Hunter on release. So, you would play Odd Hunter, or Odd Druid, but you, but you never saw Gloomstag, because, oh boy, is Gloomstag a terrible card. I mean, it's just like a, a pile of not even that great of stats. It's a 4-8 for 5 mana. That's actually not even very good. Like, for this kind of condition, is not very good. Uh, and it doesn't even have, like, Rush or anything. It's just Taunt, so it can't really affect the board. It's just, it's really, really weak. And then we have Merc Spark Eel. So Merc Spark Eel was good, I will admit. It was actually quite good for a good amount of time. But as time went on and better cards were printed, well, we approached, like, Nathria, and then, well, Merc Spark Eel is, like, fighting for its life as, like, the 30th best card in the deck. And that was before we got even better cards in, like, Showdown in the Badlands and Whispang's Workshop and stuff like that for even Shaman. Merc's Rock Eel, of course, is a 2-mana, two 2-3 two, beast. Battlecry if your deck only has only even cost cards, deal 2 damage. Super simple. It's not even that crazy of an effect. I believe they could probably just print that in an actual, like, card with no condition. And it would probably be fair. So that says a lot about Merc's Rock Eel, that a card with just... No condition could probably be printed with its exact effect and probably be fair. Uh, we see other, we've seen other cards that have similar effects to this with like a condition, and 
yeah. Well, Merc Spark Eel, it was a good card for a long time. I will not lie. It's the best card of all the ones I'm talking about by far. Nothing else even comes close. The issue is, is that was like two years ago at this point. Yeah, so two years ago is not right now. And man, Merc Spark Eel has really, really fallen from grace. That's going to be it for me, guys. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think down below. Do you think that any of these cards deserve to be buffed? Are there any other kind of underpowered like packages of cards you want to talk about or want me to talk about next? Because that's what I was trying to go for with this video. I wasn't trying to talk about individual bad cards because I could do that. I could talk about Light's Champion or Defy's Cleaner all I want. But I wanted to talk about like groups of weak cards because that's just more fun. But yeah, that's going to be it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Shadows are rising again! Darker than they've ever been